Deer. Yes, Deer. Come on now. <laughs> Good morning, everybody, and welcome to the Today's <laughs> Restaurant News and Networking Group. We are a group of restaurant vendors who are here to help each other grow our businesses and to help the restaurant industry in general to solve any problems or concerns that they might have. Uh, my name is Howard Appel. I'm the founder and publisher of Today's Restaurant News, and we invite you to join us uh, as a vendor or if you're a restaurant and you have a question that you need help, give us a call at 561-620-8888 or go to our website at trnusa.com. And uh, we have a YouTube channel, which just hit uh, a milestone number of uh, subscribers, according to YouTube. And you can access that through the website. What is that, too? Again, at trnusa.com. What was that? What was that, too? <laughs> yeah. Howard, I don't see a recording on here. Are we being recorded? Yes. In two different places. Okay. Uh, I want to introduce Thomas Thornhill, unrelated to Steve Whitehill, who's uh, who's missing at the moment. But uh, Thomas, tell us uh, who you are, what you do, where you're located, and how we can reach you. Um, my name is uh, Tom Thornhill. Uh, invited to this meeting here by Howard. I appreciate that very much. I could hardly hear myself speak because I am in West Palm Beach, Florida right now, and it's storming outside. Yes. I, don't, I don't know where you are, Howard, but I don't know if it's raining where you are, but it's certainly coming down here, cats and dogs. Yeah, I'm in Boca. It's like a, the precursor to a hurricane. Yeah. It's, it's, Where's it's, Thomas at? I'm in West Palm Beach, which is maybe uh, half an hour's drive away from uh, where Howard is, up going north. Yeah. A half hour drive for two miles. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, um, I am a retired, I, I was, I was uh, a CPA in my working days. And uh, I, I sort of specialized in retirement planning for small business people, investing and that sort of thing. And uh, as such, I did a lot of work with restaurant owners. Um, so what I'm here to talk about today is a program that brought me out of retirement because I met this company that uh, uh, they're really helping restaurants a lot because of the problem, the specific problems restaurants have uh, trying to hire and retain good employees because many times they can't get good benefits and so um, and this product really uh, is quite innovative, quite unique. So I'm out of retirement speaking to all my, it's not just for restaurants, but it's, it really helps restaurants a lot because restaurants is one type of business that many, in many cases do not give health insurance to the employees. So this helps them with that. Uh, if you want to get hold of me afterwards, I'll put my information in the chat, Howard, as we spoke. But I'm here in West Palm Beach. Well, give us a, a number where we can reach you so the people watching on YouTube All right. can it's, reach you. It's, it's, uh, my name is Tom Thornhill. My number is 561-358-9661. And so, so specifically, what, how is it that you help a restaurant? Oh, I, I didn't, I didn't know. I thought, I didn't know you wanted me to do that right now. Yeah, t tell us because we, we have. Okay. We all want to know what you do better than yes. so that we can help you. Well, you have this plan. You have this uh, health insurance program. It's not health insurance. It's a, it's a whole suite of health and wellness benefits that uh, they set up under the Section 125 tax, tax law. It's more or less like how the 401k is set up. And so the employees in the restaurant, let's say, We'll get this whole slew of benefits. It doesn't matter if the company has health insurance. If it does, well, these benefits just go to, to improve the benefits. And if they don't have health insurance, 
well, then this will be their primary product. And these benefits are for themselves and the whole family. Now, the way it works is that they, because of the way the benefits are set up, the employees pay less payroll tax. As a result, the employees get to take home an extra $125, $150 a month. So the employees get all these benefits, plus they get an a raise, basically. From the employer's point of view, from the restaurant's point of view, because the employees pay less payroll tax, the employers pay less payroll tax on a matching basis. So the employers uh, save about $700 per year per employee. So you have a situation where the employees get benefits and they get a raise and the em employers save $700 a year for each employee, which means that if you spoke to a 30 employee restaurant, you're talking about them saving $21,000 for the year. And the kicker is all of this is done at zero net cost to the employers and the employees. So you're talking here about a totally free program that gives the employees benefits, gives them a raise, and gives the employers savings of about $700 per employee, all at no cost. So that's why I came out of retirement, really, because when you speak to people, and of course, it's not just for restaurants, it's for any business. So when you speak to people about this, the only thing they have to say is, hey, it's too good to be true. Well, it really does sound that way, but it is true. So you just put them onto the company and the company explains everything. It's, it's, uh, it's part of the tax code, and that's how it works. Sounds interesting. Well, I yeah. think we. I think I think we have some people here that could probably work with you and help you. Yeah. And the, yeah. well, ac actually, uh, you say work with me, but the the company, uh, anybody that you speak to, any of your clients or anything, any of your customers, uh, of course, they're very appreciative of you bringing this to their attention. But the company, TrueMark, is the name of the company. They're very appreciative also. So they have quite a super affiliate program uh so and the affiliate program pays residually on an ongoing basis for everybody that's in the plan so you work once and you basically get paid forever so it's it's quite an it's quite a nice thing so i'd like to speak to everybody about uh how it actually works i'll put some information in the chat so you could look and see what the plan looks like and my phone number and everything okay thank you i'm i'm going to let everybody do their intros now, and then I'll come back to you. Okay. All right, Rick, you want to start us off? Since you were the first one here. <laughs> uh -huh. I have to be the first one here because I'm the one that's on the central time zone, so I'm always the first one here. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. <laughs> what was that laugh for, Terry? Uh, no reason. <laughs> <laughs> Good morning, everybody. This is Rick. I am Rick Israel. Uh, first of all, if you see if you see bags under the eyes and you see me tired, it's because our annual enrollment season has officially started. Uh, we're able to start discussing the plans on the 1st of October. So uh, no sleep for me until December the 8th. Um, but we are an independent insurance brokerage firm. Uh, we do more than just group benefits. Uh, we also do the Medicare space um, for individuals who are not aware this year, 65% uh, of Medicare beneficiaries are going to change their plans because of the Inflation Reduction Act, which lowered the max amount of pocket of drugs from $8,000 to $2,000. Uh, so we want to make sure that individuals are aware that formularies are being cut, premiums are going up, and drug prices are going up. Um, and that's because the insurance companies now have to cover 60% of the negotiated price of the medications when the individual hits that $2,000 mark. So individuals that are trying to do the insurance by themselves, they, listen, I, to anybody listening, that's fine, that's great. Do it if you if you have enough faith, but if you get lost, we have, a, we have the ability to help you at a zero cost. If you decide to use our agency, we get compensated by the insurance company. So know that if you come to my office, get the education, you've walked out smarter than when you walked in. 
Um, I'm based in Huntsville, Alabama, but I am licensed in Alabama, Georgia, Tennessee, and Florida. So thank you very much. Okay. Uh, um, Chris, good morning. Good morning, everybody. Chris Kaufman, restaurantallstars.com. Yes, indeed. Restaurant All Stars conveniently reached at 404 All Star, 404 255 7827. And that number works whether there's a hurricane or not. And um, <laughs> we are working with uh, restaurant companies right now, some of whom have not been affected by the uh, hurricane because they happen to be in higher ground or more drier ground. And our focus is primarily inside the four walls, meaning uh, general managers, executive chefs, and uh, also corporate people, such as uh, directors of marketing, directors of construction. And the uh, marketplace right now is red hot for people. However, historically, uh, the market tends to slow down in the, in the employment game in the restaurant industry once you get to Thanksgiving. But right now, it's the run for the roses. It's the every day is um, is showtime. And I mean every day. I mean Saturdays, Sundays, Mondays, Tuesdays. Companies are interviewing like crazy right now. So um, we work on behalf of the restaurant companies. We are a business-to-business -business type of business. And the uh, the demand for people is, is pretty high as restaurants continue to, to grow and expand and uh, if nothing else, hold on to what they currently have uh, because the the uh, economy is rather tenuous, as they say. And um, but there's going to be a lot of opportunity uh, in the in the rebuilding of a lot of cities and towns that have been devastated with what happened in the hurricane situation. Chris Kaufman, Restaurant All Stars, 404 All Star. And that's the way it is. Have a great day. Okay, thank you. Uh, Ed, good morning. Uh, I give you the opportunity morning, to follow now. him because he was mild today. He's no problem. Suffering, poor guy. He's water. <laughs> oh my God. Thank you, Chris. I appreciate following you. You're very good today. Thank you. By the way, I, I still like the coconut. Surprised there's still coconuts on that tree in the background. I get, I get one right now. Okay, yeah, yeah. They didn't get blown down. Okay, that's great, great. That, sit on the beach with a coconut in Valdalia. Very good. <laughs> I, I saved my beach in a hurricane. I saved my beach. <laughs> you have the Corps of Engineers putting more uh, sand on it right now? Absolutely. Okay, see? You're way, that's where the FEMA money went. That's Oh. My, my name is Ed Gerton with Seaco Sales out of Orange Park, Florida, which is just outside of lovely Jacksonville, uh, Florida. We're a restaurant equipment company that specializes in frozen dessert equipment. So we have uh, horizontal batch freezers and vertical batch freezers uh, by Carpajani, soft serve machines, uh, single barrel, double barrel, and heat treat from Carpajani and BGI Industries. We have display cases from ESA, IFI, and GTI Design. We have uh, drink machines, whipped cream machines, mixed treatment machines. Anything you want in a frozen dessert, we can supply. Uh, number is 904-334-4489. And we will be at the Florida Restaurant Show in booth 1475, which will be in about a month from now. So see you all there. Okay, good day. I, I'm going to include you in our list. Well, that, I, that I sent out with with the invitation to today's meeting. I'm going to make an ad out of that for mm -hmm. the group. We got our booth number today, Howard. I don't know if you're aware. I know. Okay. Uh, Brian, good morning. Morning, everybody. Good morning, Brian. Good morning, morning Ed. Good morning. Your sister-in-law is coming to live with you now. Okay, that's good. For a week. For a week, okay. Then she's got to go. <laughs> uh, we are being recorded, gentlemen. It's all right. <laughs> Good morning, everybody. Um, I'm Brian with uh, Rogue Financial Group. Um, we are a commercial equipment financing company. We'll do from small projects, large projects, work all over the country, do a lot of work with startups. Um, again, um, 
when I say uh, equipment, it could be, you know, for a restaurant, a bar, a brewery, a convenience store. I do other industries too. Um, and again, Brian with um, Rogue Financial Group. But I want to um, pay thank you to Mike. Um, I met with those guys at Stone Stonecrest. Big project, um, working on it with him, trying to put all the pieces together. There's a lot of moving parts there with it as far as trying to um, get the financing for it. Um, I'm waiting for some information from him, some other stuff, but uh, it's a neat project. Yeah, and yeah really it unique. Really is. But other things real quick, I wanted to kind of give a um, market report on a couple things. Uh, I stopped by this food hall in Roswell. It's on the curve. It's in, um, maybe Mike knows it. it's over going out of Roswell. It's opening up um, sometime first of November, first of November. Um, there's a lot of independence in there. Um, a lot of people that have had like, uh, that are in food halls. Um, but I didn't, I was talking to this guy, Tim, which is the GM. He works for this company called National Food Solutions out of Texas. And basically they are the management company for a lot of these food halls around the country. So, you know, you know, they are a growing company. If you look on their website, you'll see that there is a, uh, a website where they're at in different cities. So it's called National Food Solutions. Um, and then if you're in Roswell, I don't know, Mike, if you've been by the Southern Post, right? Yeah, yeah um, I've got a guy working on it, Jason. Yeah, okay, cool. Um, so there's, uh, I think Brew uh, uh, Butcher and Brew is a, a Todd Hogan, right? It is. It yeah, is. Okay. All right. Then um, Ed... Maybe you can help Ed out because they're looking to put gelato into this place. It's called a Morarina, A A M O R I N A, and um, it looks like. And then they haven't even started build out, but there's the one on the top where the the apartments is is called Brana. I think they're opening up last night or tonight. And there's a Mexican restaurant going in there too. So, but yeah, and then um. Also in Chambly, Mike, there's a big project. Have you seen that where there's a downstairs, upstairs, and there's, and there's a uh, uh, deck on the top? It's going to be a pizza and um, and burger place. I don't even know who the con who the owner is, but it's huge. They've been building. They've been building on it for probably like eight nine months. So maybe check. Not off the top of my head. I'll be over there on Thursday. Though I'll check it out. It's right. It's right across from where um, Gus's Chicken is. Then that place that just opened up called the Shambly Tap Room. It just okay. opened up. So if you see it, it's huge. It's but that's um. You travel more than I do, man. Yeah. <laughs> then um, also I was telling Chris yesterday I walked through um, NFA Burgers, which I think they're trying to do three locations. Yeah. And I walked in there just to see. It was about quarter to two, and there was still a line out the door people ordering burgers in this gas station and i look over i guess the guys that own the gas station they're like looking like going what is going on here <laughs> nobody's buying like food in their place yeah yeah nobody wants any of their stuff so the burgers are great so uh bob and and uh and Bill, dan that Bill, run that show they're they're fantastic people they're good is that at, billy they're kramer billy and then uh they also uh he's partnered with grand champion barbecue which okay, is uh, yeah. bob owens Okay. Well, that's it. That's all I got for today. And I can be reached at 404 723 7222. And I have one more thing. One more thing. <laughs> one thing. There seems to be a growth of people taking these con these steel containers and making stuff out of it. I um Terry, I'll get you the contact. His name is Sean um Cooper. He's opening up a uh, a uh, coffee shop in Destin. And I'm working with him a little bit, and I'm supposed to get some more information on him. But he's going to take these containers and make a drive-through coffee place. So, seems to be the trend with the uh, containers now. Yep. That's it. Brian, you're yeah, talking yeah. about the shipping containers. Yes. Like, that's a yeah. big business down here and everywhere. They're they're making modular houses out of it, modular offices, yeah, uh, restaurants out of it. So they're yeah, putting they, them they, together they, like that. 
They're great during the summer in the heat. Yeah. Mm -hmm. There's a place in uh, Waldo that converts them. And one of the first things they do is insulate, insulate right. the entire inside. Right. And then there's, there's self, they, they, they make them, they, they put air conditioning in them, heating in their water. Just, it just depends on what the, what the layout is. But there's a big business down in Waldo. Waldo's a population of about 30 people. Yeah. It is Waldo. Yeah. It is Waldo. Where is I Waldo? Said, where is Waldo? Where? Yeah. Waldo yeah. is an infamous town in <laughs> on 301 that had a traffic light, and the speed limit would go from 65 to 35. And if you did 37, they would pull you over and give you a ticket. I thought that was Lottie. It's Waldo, Stark, Lowdy, all those towns through all that whole area there. Okay. I got a ticket in Arcadia. Same same kind of same kind of town. Anyhow, moving on. Hey Ed? Yes, yes. I might have another thing for you. I'm talking to this guy. So I just got it from one of my vendors on um, Kelly Harris that owns Village Bread. Does that ring a bell? Yep, it, down in Jacksonville, yeah. He's taken over the Orange Something Country Club. Orange Park Country Club, probably. Yeah, he's going to be really... It, the Orange Park Country Club went into receivership five or six years ago, and it was a, a country club that, that had houses all around it. The last business model I heard of that was they were going to eliminate uh, nine holes and try to convert them into houses. The, 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 the clubhouse itself was owned by somebody separate and with the swimming pool and, and the tennis courts. The tennis courts are owned by a third person. I don't have the no idea of the ownership, but they're ripping out the tennis courts and putting in um, pickleball instead. Yeah. But uh, I'll get you Kelly's contact. You call yeah, him. Kelly. And another uh, uh, up and coming chain is H&H uh, &H Bagels, uh, made famous by Seinfeld episode, I guess. Uh, they just <laughs> opened up in. Boca Raton and Terry, where else are they opening? How would I know? Oh, you told me yesterday. Yeah. <laughs> West Palm Beach, Fort Lauderdale, West Palm Beach, Tallahassee, um, and so they're going to open thirty franchisees uh, within the next year. Thirty franchises, and they and have all, all the bagels come directly from New York, frozen, I think. Yes, that's what I heard. And the custom smears and all that. That you can't really get anywhere else. All right. How about uh, Mike? Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. I am Mike Sardone with Spot On. We have all of your point of sale needs. Um, what we handle is basically all your point of sale transactions. We uh, from server to kitchen. Um, we also try to do a better job of partnering with your business. Not really just trying to be there to facilitate just your. Uh, customers needs but also your customer growth and acquisition so trying to go outside of that we offer marketing programs um, teamwork platforms just to help you uh, control your labor platform and time management as well as reserve platforms that take reservations for guests and customers keep all those custom notes and things like that so we can uh, help you focus on growing your book of business instead of uh, just trying to save a nickel so but um my name is Mike Sardone. I'm the Georgia State Manager. Anything you need within any of the company, I can get you uh, help. My number is 678-231-2279. And my contact info email is mike.sardone, S-A-R-D-O-N-E, at spoton.com. And uh, if you need any financial help, work with Brian. He's, uh, he's been a great partner. Okay, thank you. Uh, Charles, good morning. Good morning. My name is Charles Hay. I'm with On the Fly Food Safety, and I teach uh, the Surf Safe Manager course in four hours. Uh, we can also do the uh, uh, food handler training for you as well. If you want to get a hold of me, my phone number is 904 923 2577. And my email address is info, that's I N F O, at On the Fly Food Safety. If you need us on the fly, we can get you there next day. If I don't have anything going on, I'll definitely be there. And uh, looking to expand into Georgia next year. So if you all need anybody, 
or give me a couple of weeks and I'll get registered up there and we'll get you taken care of. Okay. Thank you. Thank uh, you. Ter Terry, good morning. Good morning, everyone. Happy Friday and um, happy one month to show on what I do here. Uh, and the reason that there are two of us from today's restaurant news is because I handle the staff with a monthly lead report. And that report is second to none anywhere in the U.S. Anybody mm -hmm. can find anything even close. Your report is free. I guarantee 50, five, zero brand new leads a month. And what this is, it's done in an Excel spreadsheet. You get the establishment, you get the status of where the building or permitting or breaking ground or whatever is at. You get the owner's name, phone number, email address, you get the complete address with all different types of other things that could go right along with that. Uh, when Brian was talking about a two-story building, um, we have two and three-story buildings. They are taking an old, um, oh gosh, in Georgia and in Florida, an old, like a, one is an old court building, and one is an old school, and they're actually making these into massive restaurants. One is going to be 17,000 square feet, a very upscale steakhouse. Um, they want to be the best ever. Anyways, these reports will give you all that information. Um, you get them by, actually, I just sent them out this morning. Usually they go out by the 9th. The tent at the latest in Florida, the report in Georgia goes out about the 15th or before. That has nowhere near the leads as Florida, obviously, because we go from the panhandle down to Key West. Anybody wants a sample report, I'm happy to send it. T-E-R-R-I at T-R-N-U-S-A.com. It's also done in an Excel spreadsheet, so you can separate it. Uh, we have a lot of food service establishments, big companies that get these every month. They delegate them to their salespeople in the corresponding areas and um, make a lot of sales. They renew year after year after year. Once you're in, you're in. You'll see the uh, price online. You are in this group. It is not that price. Please call me. 561-620-8888. Before we go on, Brian, we talked about the other day at the food trucks at the uh, Florida restaurant show. And yeah. There's two of them that are registered right now. Nile Craft Food Trucks, which has been there for a while, and the one who just came on last night is Phoenix Food Truck. Mm-mm. No. <laughs> No, ain't happening. Well, they're they're they got a spot there. It's green right now, which means they haven't paid for it yet. Yeah, just they're they're dangerous. <laughs> Sorry, what can I say, Thomas? If you uh, what we're talking about is in the beginning of November, November sixth and seventh, there is a show in Florida called Florida Restaurant Show, and it, it's co-located with the. Pizza Tomorrow Summit, and today's Restaurant News will have uh, a section of that show. We have about nine booths right now. I think we'll have ten by the end of the day. Uh, so if you have any interest at all in exhibiting at that show, let me know. Okay, and, we'll talk about it. Okay, and... Uh, I'm going to double back to you right now to uh, ask you if you have anything you want to add or change or uh, tell us anything else about what you do. Well, for now, this is this is what I do. I'm, I'm concentrating on uh, 
just getting this program out, not just the restaurants, but the all business people. I should say, though, the, um, the, the caveat with this program is that uh, it, it just works for 10 employees and up. Um, so under 10 employees, it, it doesn't go. But it goes up. They have they have guys actually signing five hundred thousand people up now in in uh, the, the the states and the counties and all sorts of people signing up for this program. So there's no limit to the top side, but we 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 start at ten ten employees. What's your phone number again? Five six one three five eight nine six six one. Thank you. Uh, all right, I'm going to just talk about uh, our publication for a second. Uh, we we published today's restaurant news, and we've been publishing that since 1996. And uh, in the early part of this year, we started a new feature where we highlight a city in the United States and talk about their culinary uh, openings, et cetera, and spotlight a company from that area. And in the, uh, this month of October, we're highlighting Orlando because the show is in early November. And if you look on our website in the centerfold, which, which is trnusa.com, <clears throat> you'll see the two-page spread of Orlando. And next month, we are featuring Denver, Colorado. And in December, we will be featuring New York City. And in January, we're going to do Washington, D.C. And... Uh, and any other cities coming up, I don't have the schedule yet. If you have any suggestions, we'll take it. Uh, we have we haven't touched on California yet. We have to do that. Uh, all right. Did I miss anybody? Ed, did I miss anybody? Hey, you got me today. <laughs> <laughs> hey, uh, Howard. Yes. Real quick, I just heard I was talking to somebody else. Real quick about something. I heard that um, Top Golf is in a little trouble. Oh, no. Yeah. Well, they keep opening up everywhere, and their prices are very expensive. Well, it has to do with the food. I was Yeah. And it has to do with just expense and just... My understanding is Top Golf is owned by Callaway. Mm -hmm. So so Callaway, the club manufacturer, is doing well, but the other division is not... And I read somewhere that they're looking at splitting that into two different companies now. Correct. So we'll I read see, the same see what happens. Hmm. All right. Where, where's Charles? He, he left. I got a topic. It would be good for him. Anyway, uh, usually at this point in the meeting, we pick a topic and discuss it for a couple of minutes. So I want to read to you uh some of the points we have here. This is an article that I read, Five Ways to Reduce Food Waste and Save Money in a Restaurant. Very good. So, so the, first, the first way to reduce waste is portion control. Mm -hmm. uh, are you measuring your servings? Keeping portions consistent not only pleases customers and predict, pre predictability, but also reduces over prep. Number two is inventory checks. Regular inventory checks can prevent over ordering. How often do you check your stock? Share your inventory schedule. Number three. Creative reuse. Turn yesterday's unserved bread into today's crispy croutons. What's your favorite dish? To, 
to recreate from leftovers. Number four, staff training. Educate your team on waste reduction. Do you have training in place? Drop a tip on how you can train your staff. And number five is keep track of what's being thrown away. Do you use a waste log? Tell us how it's helped you. That uh, Tell us what's being thrown away. It's kind of interesting. To me, this, it should be number six. Tell us how food is going out the back door. <laughs> Where's Charles? He knows all about this. Well, it's going out the back door into someone's food and someone's uh, Mercedes. <laughs> yeah. Howard, hey Howard, when I was when I was newly married, I did a you know about six months at a Chick Fil A. I'll tell you how it's going out the door. It's going <laughs> through the employees' mouths. Right. Shrink will kill you because going into going into an employee's mouth is not being logged because they don't want to get caught. There is more internal theft with food with employees than anything else. Right. Because they think because they work there, they can eat the profits. And most of the upper management, they don't know what's going on because either they're not involved or they just don't care. Well, some some re chain restaurants have policies on feeding their employees uh, on or off shift. So, so it, it's a question of training. It's a question of uh, management telling them what they can and can't do. Well, that well, that's that that that's not what I'm talking about. It's like I'm working, and ooh, there's some extra chicken nuggets. I'm just gonna go and pop those in my mouth before they even make it to, you know, the cash register. That's what I'm talking about. It's all the, it's all the stuff that they're eating in the back room on the clock without the management's mm -hmm. knowledge. Well, is that uh, is that stealing or is that product endorsement? <laughs> <laughs> Well, you know, at, you know, at public supermarkets, when you're trained at Publix, if you work in the deli, you you go through a series of training. You have to try every single meat and cheese they sell to so tell the employees what it tastes like. But you know, yes, public in, is it endorsement or is it theft? Mm, well, you know, I've had it before; it tastes good. I'll have some more. <laughs> you know, but uh, you know, but, um, and I'm being serious about this because. My parents are in an independent living, and I've been there a couple of times to eat and had lunch or dinner with them. And, you know, I, you know, they're smaller portions, right? But I, wa I you know, I watch people kind of watch what, you know, see what's going on. But, you know, a lot of them just don't eat, and they and they, they order it, put it in front of them, and don't even touch it. And I don't know where it goes when it goes in the back, but a lot of it's just – you know, wasted. Um, and, or, you know, I know that, I know the guy that runs the place, Mark, I guess keeps a log of who sh shows up and who doesn't, but yeah, it's, you know, and then, you know, people complain, especially my dad complains about the food. So it's like, God, dad. so I tell my dad, just keep your mouth shut. Cause I'm going to get a call one day and I have to go pick him up and get him out of there. But seriously, I mean, there's a lot of, there's probably a lot of waste in some of these independent and assisted livings because people just don't eat or they go back to the room and, you know, eat candy and everything. But yeah, it's, you know, there's a lot of waste there. There is a lot. We just visited someone rehab. They bring the trays in and they take them out unopened and right into the trash. It's, it's, it is unbelievable people aren't even in there they're they're in sessions getting tested yeah. they leave the trays i mean mm -hmm. and and sometimes the food isn't really all that tasteful so no. they just don't eat it but and, and you're never going to stop people from popping chicken nuggets in their mouth ever yeah. you're just not you know if you work at a restaurant you're mm -hmm. going to eat the food i don't care where it is that's never going to stop. Yeah. I mean, there's no way to stop it. How are you going to? 
to hire vegetarians to work in a steakhouse. <laughs> Absolutely. You know, last week, I think I mentioned that uh, I'm watching a series based in Sweden called The Restaurant. Uh, it's on uh, on Prime TV. And one of the episodes I watched this past week, there was a, a power shortage. Well, actually, they didn't pay their bill, so the electric company cut their power off. So the whole dining room was full of people waiting for their food, and it was in total darkness. So the the head chef, the head waiter, told all the wait, wait staff to go out and get candelabras and put candles in them and put candles on each table so that they were able to see what they were eating and the waiters were, and were able to bring food to the proper table. Well, the point of that is the executive chef had a meeting with the owner during the blackout and said to her, you know, this seems like a good idea. Why don't we do this once a week? We can have a, 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 a dinner by candlelight once a week and have specials, you know, special menu for that night. So the, the point is I'm trying to make is that you have to be able to change and you have to be able to pivot you know, in, in business, whenever something happens or situation arises like the hurricane, you have to be able to make changes on, on the fly. Well, a, a great example of being able to pivot last Friday, the only place, well, one of the few restaurants that actually was serving any food was Waffle House. OK, uh, and this was at uh, Interstate 16, exit 51. However, everything you, you went in there and they said, here's a limited menu. And uh, cause they couldn't make waffles and there's no table service. Everything you order has to be to go. And it's off this limited menu of like cheeseburgers and um, uh, some egg dishes that they could scramble on the grill. And uh, everything has to be paid cash because the POS system is down and uh, everything has to be to go. And um, they had no air conditioning in the restaurant. Mm. Okay. And the cook looked like he was just stepped out of a wet sauna. He was just <laughs> soaked. But they were pumping the food and they were getting it there. They're getting it done. And I mean, you know, it, it was um, it was a great pivot. And we certainly appreciated them being there. I just, uh, you know. Uh, I remember Tiger Woods waiting outside. Was this Tiger Woods waiting outside? Them to be sweating into the food, though, really? <laughs> I remember down here in South Florida, uh, there was a restaurant not too far from where I live that, uh, not a freestanding building, it was part of a, a strip center. They went out and invested in a giant generator. Yeah. And when hurricanes would hit, they would turn that sucker on and people were lined up down the street to get in to, to eat at the restaurant. So that's not a pivot. That's a that's a policy, but that's know. an adjustment. Open. They made a ton of money on it. Yeah. Yeah. Well, in any event, uh, Thomas, uh, yes, sir. Really thank you for coming. Welcome. <laughs> okay. Thanks for having me. And hopefully, we'll see you again. Certainly. And uh, let's see. Have a have a good weekend, everybody. And yep. uh, we'll see you next week. Okay. Uh, okay. Let the sauce okay, be with you. All right. Bye.